Do you have a newborn? Well, this video is for you to give you some simple tips to help your newborn sleep that much better. Hey there, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm the founder of the Helping Baby Sleep Method. I'm a chiropractor by training, but really found my passion empowering parents like you to teach your little ones to sleep and parent confidently daytime and nighttime. So let's dive in today and talk about some newborn sleep tips. So, you know, I thought when I was going through this the first time that sleep and parenting in general would be this beautiful, natural and instinctual experience. And so much of it is. And then there's another large chunk of it that's also a huge learning curve. So my goal today is to kind of educate you if you're in that newborn stage and it's your first kiddo or maybe even your second because 30% of our clients are second or third or even fourth time parents. Um, we wanna teach you some things to help you really enjoy that newborn stage. So with my son, who was my first one, I didn't know any of these simple strategies. And we fell down this kind of sleep abyss where we were nursing to sleep and then every couple of hours in the night. And I have nothing against nursing to sleep. If it works for you, amazing. This, this video is more for people who want to kind of get ahead of some common parenting pitfalls or are feeling like nursing to sleep just isn't working for them like it wasn't for me. So then when my second rolled around, I thought, hey, I am not doing those same strategies that I did the first time. I really wanted to be, you know, um, baby led and on demand feeding and whatnot with my first, but it just didn't work for us for whatever reason. So with my second, I took a different approach. And these are some of the tips from that that I'm going to share with you. And she was an amazing sleeper. I never had to do sleep training with her after four months of age because I taught her these simple, basic things in the newborn stage. The challenge is a lot of us aren't really even thinking about sleep so much or kind of being um, proactive in that newborn stage because it is such a le huge learning curve. A lot of the information there talks about reading cues. And personally, I found cues hard to read. So I like to try and marry them with also awake times or, um, you know, the time from when they woke up to when they need to be back asleep. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's dive in. So these are the five or five. Um, pillars of the helping newborn sleep method that this video is going to talk about. One, the first pillar is all about prevention. Second pillar is about timing. The third is an intentional feeding. The fourth is assisting your little one to fall asleep because they really can't be independent sleepers and closer till four months. And the fifth pillar really is troubleshooting because bad days will come and we want to give you the skills to know like, hey, this doesn't seem normal and what you can do about it. And why are we doing all of this? One, to really help you enjoy that newborn stage and feel that much more in tune with your little one. When I went through this with my second, I remember my sister-in-law saying to me, wow, I, I can't believe how in tune you are with her needs because I was proactive in anticipating and I developed other skills in my parenting toolbox that you can develop too that helped me really be in tune with her. Okay, it's not rigid. It's actually gives you that much more in tune. It helps you be a great troubleshooter. And on that same vein, the second purpose of it, this is helps you to be proactive rather than retroactive. So when I was going through this with my son, I was always watching the cues. Oh, is that a sleepy cue? Is that a feeding cue? I'm not really sure. And I often mistook one for another and I would go to feed him thinking he was hungry and he would fall asleep after a couple of sips. Okay. So I wanted to avoid those scenarios the second time. The third um, purpose is to help give you a great sleep base, sleep and feeding really, to avoid the effects of the four-month sleep regression. Okay, The four-month sleep regression is a neurological leap where your child wakes up to the world around them and they understand that you exist even though they can't see you and they start to call for you more frequently. So I've, had, I've seen lots of parents who are like, we were doing so great. We were, you know, we nursed to sleep. It was no problem. We got six to eight hour stretches. Everything was going well. And the four month sleep regression hit and I find myself nursing back to sleep every three hours. Okay, so that we want to help you avoid that. And if you work on sleep in this newborn period and the newborn window is pretty close, short. It's like four to about 10 weeks of age is when you can kind of work on establishing these healthy habits, um, but it can help you avoid the impact of that four months sleep regression. And finally, the last purpose of the method is to really just help you get more sleep, be better rested, feel better physically and emotionally, and feel like you're really nailing this parenting. So pillar number one is prevention. So ideally, we prevent the fussies and overtiredness because when you get into that red zone of like she's fussy overtired she's been awake too long now it gets harder to put her to sleep so sleep really does be at sleep the more well rested your little person the easier it's going to be to get them to fall asleep and then stay asleep okay so prevention is the number one um pillar the second pillar of the helping baby sleep method is timing so the idea here is you are Yes, you can use cues to help guide you, but you're also going to use the clock to know when nap time should be. Because most newborns in that first month, 
wake up. Maybe they have a feed if the nap was long, and then they can stay awake maybe 45 minutes to an hour until ideally you are making sleep happen again for them. Sometimes you might not see a tired sign. It can feel really weird starting your little nap time routine without having seen a yawn um, or whatnot, but that can be a really helpful thing for you to implement early on. Helps prevent getting overtired and fussy, which is harder to come back from. The other thing about this flexible schedule is it's like you can anticipate what the needs are going to be. Okay, I need to get to the store. Oh, it's going to fall during feeding time. Okay, no problem. I know there's a, a rest center in there. I can feed while I'm doing those, those groceries. The third pillar really is being an intentional feeder. Okay, and this means active feeding. So if you're gonna bring your child to the breast or the bottle, they are going to take a full feed. And if you're breastfeeding, a full feed is usually draining one side completely and taking half the other side. And if you're bottle feeding, that might be in the newborn stage anywhere from three to maybe five ounces tops. Okay, but full feeding. So they're not like completely falling asleep after a couple of slips, indicating that, that maybe they were more tired than hungry, but you're using food as a fuel rather than to soothe per se. Doesn't mean that you can't use it to soothe sometimes, but in general, you're trying this approach. The fourth pillar of the helping newborn sleep method is assisting. So they're really, most of them are too small and not coordinated enough to be able to self-soothe at this age. So we assist them to fall asleep by setting the stage for sleep, having a very short, maybe five minute little routine already at four weeks of age to start cueing that it's sleeping time. Darkness can also be helpful. And then in our method, we teach you how to put your kiddo down awake and help make them drowsy in the crib rather than having to do the transfer, which can start to wear off around three months of age. And the fifth pillar of the helping baby sleep method is troubleshooting. So becoming a detective to address the root is issue of sleep challenges. So in our, our group, class and coaching program, the Helping Babies Sleep School, we find that a lot of the parents coming in in the newborn stage have undiagnosed, you know, GI or even silent reflux issues. And we know that because we've been doing this for so long that we do see a certain, you know, patterns and trends start to evolve. And if your child isn't um, reaching those, then hey, what else might be going on now? And how do I troubleshoot that I hope that helps you establish some guidelines for yourself. So newborns, timing is key. Try not to keep them awake too long, no more than about an hour and a half by three months, an hour by two months. Using food for fuel rather than to soothe in general, right? Being an intentional feeder, and that includes daytime and nighttime. And helping your kiddo fall asleep in these early stages by setting them up for sex with the timing of sleep and the environment that they're sleeping in. If you're looking for some more sleep tips, we have a wonderful, simple six question sleep quiz that I'll put in the links below that will ask you some questions about what your kiddo is doing and give you some personalized suggestions to go with it. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a baby sleep tip.